Uh, welcome to today's Fridays at 4 session with me. Uh, the topic of today's discussion is family businesses hiring senior management professionals and uh, what could go wrong, what are the transition challenges and what I have seen in the course of my experience and what I believe are things which need to be taken care of. So welcome to this session and uh, let's go ahead while the others uh, join continuously. So quick introduction uh, to those of you who don't know me, I'm Gopal Kamath. Uh, I'm a business coach and uh, we run a consulting firm that helps medium scale businesses to achieve growth and to streamline their operational environment. I have been a coach to business owners for over 11 years now and over 40 odd businesses we have been coaches to. Our experience is across industries, manufacturing services, IT services, trading, and uh, a variety including you know like a doctor's practice so we've worked with various kinds of businesses and main thing which is of importance is that we understand businesses business owners and the challenges that they face we understand their working environment we understand their day-to-day -day <clears throat> their day-to-day -day challenges the things that happen in their life making it complex and we are there normally working with them. So all the experience of working with such environments is what we bring in this Fridays at four session. So moving ahead into the topic, hiring of senior professionals in family businesses. Why is this a topic today? I have been working with many 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 family owner family business owners who believe that when the business achieves a certain scale they will need to bring in external professionals to handle the management till that particular scale they have been doing the management themselves and they have been having teams which execute what has been told to them but now slowly they are having uh, the operations which have become more complex, they have um, uh, they have operations which have become more complex, they have uh, the, the challenges of a growing business, they are unable to make time for all the complexities that are coming in. So they feel that now is the time to hire a senior person who will come and control things. Now this is a very common approach, this is how they think and they believe that by doing this they can outsource the management and the company will run on autopilot. But unfortunately that's not what happens. I will share with you the top concerns or the top areas where things go wrong. Okay, The first one is they end up hiring someone who has a brilliant track record outside but when he comes into the company he can't perform. Now this is something I have observed multiple times and in multiple places. The business grows and then they look out and they say okay let me go and hire someone from an MNC kind of a setup and you know he comes with a great track record, he's got a great CV, I'm sure he'll come here and take care of things. But unfortunately, when he comes in, it's, it's a complete failure. And often the business owner is struggling to say, struggling to think, where did I go wrong? Why, does, why is it that this guy is not performing? The second area where I see problems is People are brought in from outside, they, they bring in qualified people, they bring in people who have the right kind of uh, experience, the right kind of education, the right kind of training, 
but within a very short period of time and i have specifically said one to two years because normally someone who stays beyond two to three years is like a long term guy and the places where i see failures happening is in between the one to two years in fact just three days ago with an existing client of ours we faced the same situation somebody who was handling a very senior position uh, with a lot of responsibilities just vanished overnight and he said i'm not coming from tomorrow so the, the the concern area which a lot of my clients express is why is it that people don't stay beyond one to two years the third area where i have seen problems happening is cultural mismatches family businesses tend to have traditional environments family businesses tend to have certain unsaid rules certain unsaid expectations and people come in from uh, a highly professional uh, structured kind of an environment and when they come into this kind of a traditional setup there is a problem there is a cultural mismatch and then regardless of whether the person is great or regardless of whether the person has um, enviable education and experience it just doesn't work out because the ways of working are completely different the fourth area where i see a problem and this is internal where the guy who has been brought in with experience the guy who has been brought in with knowledge the guy who has been brought in with skills from a broader industry environment is not accepted by the teams there is uh, you know uh, a chinese wall in between the people don't uh, allow him to settle down the people don't uh, participate in the change initiatives which are driven by him or her the teams don't include him wholeheartedly and the person starts feeling suffocated the person starts feeling hey i am not welcome here and this goes on for some time eventually the person gets frustrated and leaves and this is this is like something i have seen happening over and over over and over multiple times so what i want to discuss today is why does this happen what what are the reasons that we end up in such situations so let's move ahead let's talk about where is it that these family business owners go wrong what happens leading to this kind of a situation so the biggest area which i have seen is there is no thought process behind how to go about hiring traditional businesses which have grown up from small often are a one man show or a one family show you have the owner who believes that he knows how to run the company and then you have the others who are the executors now when it comes to actually implementing a hiring process they have no background they have no experience they do not know how to go about hiring so they use the best of their knowledge the best of their skills and the interviews at i mean i've seen interviews which are so superficial at times and uh, there is a lot of assumptions made about the person there is a lot of assumptions made about the job about uh, assumptions made about the content of the job so there is no thought process so the, the person who comes on board uh, nobody has thought what kind of a person we want uh, how do we go about looking for it the do we how do we check the relevant skills all that is spoken is okay where are you working what kind of experience do you have what's your current salary what are you expecting and that's it the person comes on board so this is one of the primary causes the second area where i have seen where people go wrong is once the person is on board the family business is not making an effort 
to help the person settle down. The person comes on board and he's expected to, you know, go with the flow, learn as it comes, figure out and, you know, perform like how you've dreamt. That doesn't work. That just doesn't work. So family business owners do not help the new person to settle down in the organization, understand the environment and then be able to deliver based on the experience that he's got. Third area where things go wrong is the business owner does not spell out his cultural expectations. Now, what do I mean by cultural expectations? Cultural expectations mean how the environment is expected in the organization and what is expected of the individual. For example, there was, there was this place where uh, eating of non-vegetarian food in the company was not allowed and the person who joined from outside was never told that he cannot eat non-vegetarian in the office and that led to a very uh, uncomfortable exchange of uh, uh, words and uh, you know it was totally avoidable when it, it could have been easily spelled out in advance that look here culturally we don't do this the other th other play another example of what i saw similarly was uh, one of the family business owners did not appreciate people smoking on the job so there was this senior person who was hired who would go out every hour or every two hours to have a smoke and then come back to the office or well, this became a point of friction between the management and the individual where he said, look, I am a smoker and I'm going to go out. But, you know, this could have easily been an expectation set right up front saying, look, we don't hire smokers. There are many such instances which I can give you where a cultural difference between how the family business is run and how a professional from outside behaves has created points of friction. Another area which leads to dissatisfaction is the kind of working environment which is provided to the individual. So people coming from uh, a, a structured setup expect, you know, a, a cubicle or sometimes they expect a cabin, uh, sometimes they expect uh, a seat which has three chairs in front um, or they expect, you know, uh, a personal uh, mobile to be given to them or whatever. There are many such combinations where the professional who has been exposed to this in his previous setup feels, hey, this, I didn't, I didn't expect that I would be made to sit in such a simple setup. I'm used to a much better working environment. Uh, in, in, in there, there are certain companies where uh, there are snacks which come in at five o'clock every day and people get used to this. And when they go into another setup where this is not there, they say, this place is not fun anymore. Right? So uh, if you're bringing in someone, who comes from this kind of a background, he is going to look for it in your environment. So if you're not going to provide it, this could, you know, initiate the dissatisfaction, which leads to further problems in the relationship. People who come from well-established companies, people who come from uh, setups, which are very structured, Apart from uh, the compensation, they are also going to expect benefits of that particular type. So it could be things like uh, medical insurance, uh, family insurance. Uh, they could they could expect uh, some uh, you know things like uh, paternity leave. Uh, many things which are today going on in the industry, and of course, the biggest one right now is working from home 
and uh, five day working weeks or Saturday half days or Saturday work from homes. There are many of these things which are happening today in industry. And these people bring this expectation into a traditional setup. Those expectations may or may not be discussed at the time of hiring. And then once they come in and they realize that, hey, this is not permitted here, there is a problem. Another sensitive area which leads to problems is these guys come with certain level of identity, certain level of self-esteem. They come with a, a certain chip on their shoulder and they believe that they have to be treated with respect. And when I say treated with respect, I mean it also is a little bit about uh, managing their egos. Because they know that they are, they have the talent which the industry is looking for. They know that uh, this is not the only place for them to work. If they are unhappy here, they will always get another job. So when this uh, is matched by a traditional family business owner who treats him uh, as though he is, you know, three levels below him, that's when sparks start flying. He starts feeling uncomfortable. He starts feeling like, you know, I'm not a servant over here. That kind of a feeling comes in. There is, there is a certain engagement which needs to happen between the guy who has come on board and the family business owner regularly and I have called this conversations in inverted commas because these are not any normal conversations to be had over tea but these are conversations which need to be had uh, to understand what the person expects to understand whether the person is getting what he is looking for to understand whether expectations are matching and to be able to build a relationship where both are participating in the journey together. And these conversations often are missing because this has never been the culture of the organization. It has always been the Malik, the owner and the people who work who just execute what is told. So when I say conversations don't happen, it means they don't interact. They don't speak heart to heart and acknowledge each other's uh, expectations uh, and contributions towards each other in that journey. So these are places where things go wrong. Okay. And uh, I want to uh, hear from you guys uh, on what has your experience been and how things go wrong. Um, in family businesses when senior people come on board. So we have the chat window open in the conference uh, meeting. Uh, please type in whatever are your experiences um, so that I can, I can uh, get an idea as to um, what you have come across. I'll give you two minutes to type in the chat box.
Yes, you are right. High turnover of non-family employees. Yeah. But what do you think leads to it? What is the reason that non-family employees leave? Okay, informal culture. Lack of an external view, very correct. What happens is uh, the, the business owner feels that uh, what he's doing is right. In, with, the, with the most honest of intentions, he feels he's doing right. But then there is no external view uh, which tells the business owner that, you know, what you're doing you're doing with the best intention, but that's not something that's going to work. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant point because I face this um, at many clients' places where the business owner says, look, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm giving them good salary, I'm good, giving them good benefits, I'm giving them leave, I'm uh, giving them you know, salary advance, I'm uh, helping them wherever possible, helping them get uh, school admissions for their kids. After doing all this also, they are unhappy. So what do I do? Okay. Biases and discrimination. Senior professional hiring can be impacted by unconscious biases or even discrimination. This can lead to qualified candidates being passed over due to factors such as age, gender, ethnicity or education background. Okay. Yeah. So there can be biases at the time of hiring. Yeah. So uh, this is this is classically called as the interviewer's bias, where the person gets carried away by what he is seeing in front, and uh, he believes this guy to be uh, the blessing from the gods, which he is expecting. Sadly, things turn out differently later on. Yeah. Lack of clarity about company culture and values. Senior professionals want to know the culture and values before accepting. Oh, perfectly right. You're, you're absolutely right in this. Um, lack of clarity about company culture. This is what I this is what I meant, uh, you know, when I said unclear cultural expectations. Um, many times, uh, the interview process is so superficial that uh, the expectations are not very clearly spelt in the hiring uh, during the hiring. Then what happens is the candidate assumes what he thinks he has heard. And uh, the business owner assumes that he has the business owner assumes that he has selected the candidate who meets the right expectation. Now, unfortunately, both of them don't match. And this is where it, it helps to kind of document out what are your company culture and values and be able to spell it out clearly in the interview. Like I said some time back, that if you do not want someone who uh, consumes non-vegetarian food in the office, if you do not want a smoker, uh, if you if you are not comfortable with someone uh, coming in casual clothes, you know, this is another point. People have uh, a problem when the company doesn't permit uh, casual dressing on Fridays and Saturdays. There are companies which say, no, we are formal and we are formal. We are formal all days. And this creates a problem. So uh, a lot of things about culture and values is something that needs to be discussed. 
Senior professionals expect more. Senior professionals are in need of only high packages. They want to leverage prior experience. However, that leverage should be given from the management. There is a, in most cases, there's a conflict in legacy. Yes, yes, this is, this is, uh, this is a very uh, valid point that uh, uh, when a person is hired from outside, he comes in at uh, a salary which is slightly higher than, uh, or slightly or sometimes very higher compared to the rest of the um, uh, organization. And that creates uh, an imbalance. It creates an imbalance. And uh, also it creates an unreasonable gap in expectations. So if an existing person in the organization is paid say X and you hire another person at a senior level, say at the level of 4X or 5X, the expectations of the business owner from that external guy is so high that sometimes the person collapses under the burden of that expectation. So yes, you are very right. Uh, the leverage should be given from management. They need to be able to help the person settle down and understand. Yes. Good points. Very good. So I'll uh, move ahead. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to discuss was we know what goes wrong. We know that things can uh, things can make it uncomfortable for senior professionals from outside to come in and settle down in a traditional family business. Now, knowing that things can be difficult, let's talk about what can be done to address this? So what we can do to address this is uh, the first or I would say the underlying theme or the most important thought that needs to be considered by the family business owner who is moving away from the traditional management style and bringing in senior professionals to manage needs to first make a mindset change in his own mind which is that he needs to start respecting skills and he needs to start learning to handle human egos till this point what whatever he was doing was directly running the show while the team under him executed. But now when he's bringing in senior people, what is happening is he is bringing in higher level skills. He's bringing in independent thinking people. He's bringing in confident, uh, experienced, accomplished people who come in with their own thought process. So understanding this and giving space for it is the first change that the business owner has to make within himself. When you start making this, the next points which come up are start building a thorough recruitment process. So there are various steps, you know, like you, you define the job clearly, you define the outcomes expected clearly. You define what kind of skills you're looking for, uh, define what kind of personality you're looking for, get external help if you wish to assess the person, uh, look for you know any industry level certification, look whether there are any tests which can be given to him, the results of which you can verify. There are a lot of many things, you don't have to hurry, right? Often when you make a mistake, in hiring a senior professional, the cost of the mistake is close to seven to eight months salary of that person. So you do the maths yourself and you will know how uh, risky it is when you're compromising on the recruitment process. The second thing to do is 
learn about the culture that you are okay to work with in many organizations the culture part is ingrained in the people because they learnt with the organization they they joined when they were uh, in the receptive mode they joined when they were okay to make changes in their uh, choices and they molded with whatever the organization expected as they went along but the new person who comes is not going to make that change he's going to bring certain amount of rigidity so from your side be clear about what kind of culture you have in the organization and what you are going to expect the new person to comply with it may take a little time for you to define it but if you sit with the team if you sit with your core family if you sit with the key leaders in the organization you will know what is the culture that will work for a newcomer i'll give you an example at a current client of ours there was this person who was asked by the managing director to do a particular task which did not happen to be part of his job description so this guy said i am sorry sir i will not do this because this is not something that uh, i can do it's not part of my job now this led to an immediate you know kind of a friction where the person said how can this guy say i will not do something which the md is saying so in a certain way the individual was also right but he could have put it across differently and on the other hand the md also needed to communicate to the person saying look as part of your job i may ask you to do a few other things which are related to the organization but not part of your job and you may want, you may you may need to do it here in the organization so gaps like these seep in and then it becomes a problem so as far as possible try to define the culture so the culture typically comes in the form of choices preferences behaviors habits see what what is acceptable and what is not acceptable try to define it for your company a big area which is ignored by people is they believe that good talent is out there and what is in house is not sufficient and this is something i personally advise all my clients that the grass is not necessarily green only on the other side you will you will realize that there is a, there are a lot of uncut diamonds within your organization they just need some amount of attention and care and training and mentoring and coaching before they become the leaders that your organization needs but this is very few companies do this because everybody wants uh, quick results they immediately want that manager from outside to come in on board and take over from tomorrow which very rarely happens so you have to look at grooming internally and developing people from within with a long term perspective so if you have that young engineer today in your organization he is your manager of tomorrow and he is your general manager of day after tomorrow how are you going to groom that person to take that position because that is in my opinion the easiest way to build leadership the fourth recommendation which i have is take a step down and talk to your people stop being that malik and talking down to your people saying i know everything i'm going to tell you what is to be done right like i said respect for skills and acceptance of human egos will help you go and talk one to one man to man with that person 
make him feel like we are all equal and understand what you can do to help him or her settle down and that really works so learn how to handle egos learn how to handle people's sensitivities learn how to avoid a clash of uh, uh, self esteem and uh, ego issues i think that that helps in a long way the fifth area was i thought when you are making the environment for that individual so comfortable internally that he or she doesn't look externally or he doesn't find something better externally it automatically works out and this is not just about um, compensation packages this is also about the kind of emotional environment you create this is also about the kind of uh, safety net that you create for him or her is also about the kind of uh, uh, family kind of a feeling that you can give within the organization and i have seen these things work people leave not just about not just for money they also leave uh, because the environment is so toxic that it just doesn't feel right to work there so what is true for any kind of work environment is also true for a family business environment where there is a senior person from outside give him something which makes him feel comfortable and then finally share whatever good times the company is having so if the company has done very well in a particular year make it obvious to everybody that look this year has been good for us so i am sharing something with you so it creates it creates a, a confidence within the people that we are not just here to uh, make things good for the company we are here in an environment where we all play together and we all share the wins the best example has been how some of the big companies in uh, the it industry grew because the talented people were taken along and whatever success came along the way was shared with them and it it really helped people to stay and multiply uh, the value that the organization could create so make it make it good for the people to stay and have patience i've seen many family business owners get impatient with people who have been hired from outside at high salaries i can understand the sentiment i can understand that as a small business whatever you did by saving the last penny and trying to you know scratch the bottom of the vessel it's the organization has come to a reasonable size and now you can afford to hire someone uh, whom you can pay uh, handsomely and now when the person when you see this happening you are uncomfortable and you want to quickly start seeing results and when this happens uh, this impatience can can be a little hurtful so have patience again not forever but be reasonable give the person enough time to get uh, a hold on the new environment and be able to perform so set expectations so that it's a win win and the person can also contribute when he gets comfortable in the environment so these are a few things which you could do in my opinion which can help it become a win win for both so i want to again hear from you guys what else you feel we can do to make it comfortable for senior guys coming from uh, outside to be successful in a family business so i'll give you 2 minutes you can you can type in your uh, uh, 
uh, your inputs and your thoughts in the comments. Okay, weekly or monthly meetings with business owners. Yeah, that's right. There has to be more meaningful conversations happening within the uh, uh, leadership team and the, the senior guy who has come on board, very right. Have, have more interaction. Like I said, uh, there has to be uh, a, a connect happening emotionally as well as uh, on the comfort level of the person in the organization. More so in the beginning when the person is still settling in. Yeah. 